Dame Judith Anderson. I don't know if you remember her, she won an Oscar. And my English was very bad. And I was newlywed, and my husband came and visited me. And I complained to him. They, they called her stupid. He says, what do you mean? I said, they called her dumb Judith Anderson. <laughs> he said, no, no, he said, Dame Judith Anderson. <laughs> and I thought it was so rude. <laughs> Today we're going to talk with a lady who started as a beauty queen. She was Miss Greece, a former Miss Universe, and she turned into one of the great Indian princesses of all time. In A Man Called Horse, Corinna Fields. Welcome, Corinna. Thank you. That was um, over half a century ago, so <laughs> let's not talk about that. How is it that you haven't changed? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> How did that happen? I know that uh, you were speaking Greek at the time. I was uh, under the contract to Fox. And we usually went to acting classes, dancing classes, speaking classes. So uh, they asked me to go for the movie A Man Called Horse to play an Indian princess. So I went and I did the interview in Greek. I would say something in Greek because they were not um, English dialogue for me in the movie. So everything actually, I said a very lovely Greek prayer with a lot of passion. <laughs> so I got the job. When I went there, I had, I had in Greece, Western, it was our favorite movies in Greece. You wouldn't believe it how much we loved them. So it was like a dream came through. He's man reduced to his absolute minimum. <laughs> It was hard for me after the movie was over because a lot of Indian people, they were against me. Why come I didn't, they didn't pick an Indian girl? And I understand that totally. But I thought it was acting. So if I waited to be an American waiting for a Greek part, I'll be out of a job, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to, uh, we went to Durango, Mexico with two Indians. Amer and it was amazing because they couldn't get passports to go to Mexico. They couldn't prove that they were Americans. So I learned my earrings. Oh, it's my hitting My earrings. Uh, my earrings. When we edit this, it'll be just a fast cut like that, and all of a sudden, we'll see if people are paying attention. <laughs> I got that in the movies, too. You, you right. go in with one dress, and you come out with a totally different from, from the ladies. So. So it was a wonderful experience for me to learn about their culture. And believe it or not, it was close enough to my culture. You know, respect of the elders, respect for the, your name to be proud of it, respect uh, for your grandparents. And it was totally similar. So I spent three months with them in Durango, Mexico. And I learned them a lot of history. Indians, they never went headbands. It was Hollywood that put it on so they can keep their wigs together. We had historian there that in details, we couldn't have the color blue because they hadn't discovered that yet. Really? So it was a gold history lessons for me. Mm -hmm. And we bonded, I bonded Well, with the them. film was a monster hit. Right. And you weren't the only non-Native American as an Indian. Judith Anderson was the mother. Uh, the mother and had a major part in that. Dame Judith Anderson. I don't know if you remember her, she won an Oscar. And my English was very bad. And I was newly wed. And my husband came and visited me. And I complained to him. They, they called her stupid. He says, what do you mean? I said, they called her dumb Judith Anderson. <laughs> he said, no, no. He said, Dame Judith Anderson. <laughs> I thought it was so rude. <laughs> So I learned a lot. <laughs> Richard Harris, of course, this was a big step for him in terms of showing he could be an action star. Actually, he had done a movie that I saw him when I was 16. He played the rugby player, Sporting Life. That was it. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And Richard, I met him before. I did a little part in the movie with him and Doris Day, so I get to know him. And he was a wonderful storyteller. But he liked to drink. <laughs> 
And because the movie, he was always naked most of the time, he never drank. I mean, for three months we were there, he could exercise every day, and he stopped drinking, and he was terrific. He did a sequel to that, too, because the film was so popular, Return yes. of a Man Called Horse. Richard Harris repeats his most demanding role in a spectacular new motion picture. Bigger, bolder, more electrifying than any film of its kind. Hang in, Bill! I believe Elliot Silverstone directed, directed yours, and he had just come from doing Cat Baloo, exactly. a comedy western. Well, it was interesting because as an outsider in a way, and being first time in a big set out of town, you absorb a lot of things. So Dame Judith is a very strong actress. Richard Harris was very strong. And Elliot, I felt sorry for him because he would say to me, you go there and you go blah, blah, blah. Well, what he's going to say, my dialogue, sing Indian. <laughs> and then he would, and Richard would go crazy. He wanted somebody stronger. So there'll be fights. So I learned the four letter words there. It was my experience. <laughs> Your first English words. Yeah, there, there. What sort of things did Richard disagree on with Elliot? Different point of view. And Dame Judith uh, will try to work both sides. She was an Mediate. amazing mediator. Mm -hmm. uh, because Richard knew exactly what he wanted. And he was right most of the time, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And Elliot, I felt badly for him because uh, he was biting his nails, and it was just <laughs> not a pleasant experience for well, him. Were you there when they strung him up? A man called Horse. To finally become an Indian warrior, he must perform the sun bow ceremony, perhaps the most electrifying ritual ever seen. I was there and they did the rehearsal. So they took him up and dropped. They didn't do a good job, so he dropped right on his back. How far a drop? High. And he was quiet on the set. And then he got up. Mm. <laughs> and then more words came out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, were the camera on? Cameras on? Because nobody had them on, so he didn't have to do it again. But they had to do it again. Freddie Field, your, uh, your, late your late husband, who was just one of the nicest people in the whole world. I agree. He made some great movies, too, and one of them, Glory, won a couple of Academy Awards. Denzel Washington got an Oscar for that. He worked for, in the project for eight years to bring it to mm -hmm. life, and he, that was his favorite movie that he ever done. Well, it, so, it, that was... The rewards were beautiful, yes. the appreciation, the letters he got. It was just wonderful. Did he go on location to those films? Yes, Amana, Georgia. And you too? I went, and the mayor was Greek, so I got a lot of good things going on for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Greek connection is good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Freddie also did uh, a soccer movie with Pele. Victory. Victory. In, uh, we shot in Hungary. And Michael Caine, I think, Sylvester Stallone. And Pele. He yes. was God everywhere we went. Pelé, I mean, they pushed Stallone and Michael away and the people would go to Pelé. <laughs> and he was the nicest guy. Yeah. He still is the nicest guy. Yeah, he was, he's a superhero I to know. them, yes. I know, he was like the Pope going around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was, I experienced with him. Victory, starring Sylvester Stallone, Michael Caine, Max von Sydow, and introducing Pelé. How'd you like to play football against the Germans? Why not? After you did uh, The Man Called Horse, did you want to go further into the acting career? So, oh, I wanted to be an actress, honestly. First, I wanted to come to America, and I'm so happy I, I, I've been here since then. I saw Elizabeth Taylor, Audrey Heber, beautiful clothes, beautiful cars, beautiful houses. I wanted to be that. Well, with an Indian getting up five o'clock in the morning <laughs> and going up there and getting up, the dirt and everything, no, it wasn't for me. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> so, and then uh, on the set, my husband visited me. I was nearly wet, visited me, and I got pregnant. And my son was born afterwards and loved being a mother. So mm -hmm. I don't 
regret it, and I'm happy I decided to do that. You said you, even in Greece, you watched a lot of Westerns and they were big there. What do you remember as a child seeing on, uh, in the movies? When, well, Western, uh, because in Greece they show from Europe, from India, from everywhere movies. We go, I would go every Sunday and watch that. And the Western, it was the, the action that we would see. And we, I love Indians. I love, I wanted to be an Indian. And you were. <laughs> and I was, you know, whenever you dream, I dreamed to come to America. And I came. I dreamed it when I was five. Every night, pray to God, come to America. And I made the deal with God. If I come to America, I help still children. And since the moment I came to America and been involved in different charities, I help children. And then Indian, and then I met the Indians, and it's like I'm a lucky person. Mm -hmm. So right now, there's so many years ago, I'm 52 years in America, so I don't even remember who was the stars. We didn't know about stars. We knew about, we liked the movies. Well, you're still doing a lot of uh, work for children through Cher. Right. You're a Cher sister. Tell us what that is all about. Once a month we get ready, we're about 50 ladies, and we give to seven different places. The Rape Treatment Center, I had with horses, Exceptional Children Foundation, to places that we go personally and see what they need. And every year in May, we put a big show and we raise money, and then in February, we give away the money. And since I have been my family here, I've done that since 1985, it's became my family. You know, the girls, we love each other, we hate each other, we're fighting, we have strong opinions, but in the end, we're all just like sisters. And Laura was there for a long time, your lovely wife. Wow. She is, and you've been lovely. I appreciate you coming here today. My pleasure. Uh, the movie is a classic. Thank and, you. And so are you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right,